Hello and welcome to this Luft webinar. My name is Tobias Weil. I'm responsible for the online marketing at Luft and uh, today I'm the technical support for this webinar. Mr. Wolfgang Klaus uh, will tell you something more about the iBox, the gateway for your environmental application. So the I iBox in the environmental business. Maybe some of you know it from the industrial applications. Today we will talk about the environmental business. Before I give the word to Wolfgang Klaus, uh, let me say uh, something about questions. Uh, we would like to get questions from you. Um, you can enter your questions all the time during the webinar with the questions box uh, on your right side and we will stop the webinar uh, at a certain time and uh, answer all your questions. So now I give the word to Wolfgang Klaus. So it's your turn Mr. Wolfgang Klaus. Yeah, thank you um, and uh, hello everybody. Uh, welcome from my side. Um, as I see on the participants list, um, uh, you are coming from all over the world. So let me try to make it as short and as, as uh, precise as possible my, my English and um, then let's start. Um, well, I, again to me, I'm Wolfgang Klaus from Ondix uh, here in Germany and uh, we are working with Luft um, for more, more about 10 years now. Um, we, our core competencies are in the web portal area, in the app area and um, now about five years in the, uh, in the hardware domain uh, regarding sensor data management. Um, so now uh, I will go in detail uh, about the Luft iBox in environmental applications uh, or more precisely the Luft iBox serial because the serial uh, version is uh, dedicated to environmental applications. In the ne next 45 minutes or uh, yes about 45 minutes um, we will talk about why the Luft iBox, what was the motivation to start this development and um, that you can understand about our motivation. Um, then we will go uh, into some uh, typical environmental measurement scenarios, applications um, you see with your customers, you see at the customer side or partner side. Um, we will talk a little bit about installation setup because um, to get a box, to bring the box to life is the most important part to see the box working. Uh, then we will go into the user interface. Maybe you have seen already a uh, Luft iBox serial working or you haven't seen it working, then we will show some, some you have got, got an impression about the user interface. And finally, we will go into the roadmap 2015, let you uh, learn what is coming in 2015, what our, our focal points are, what we are developing right now and what you can expect and, uh, during the, the year 2015. So a lot of nice things are coming, I can assure you from right now. I hope you can read my slides um, and uh, we will start over to why did we start the Luft iBox development. Well, first Luft has an excellent portfolio in environmental sensors. Um, the, the, the portfolio is quite rich now, there are many uh, devices, um, most of them talk UMB, they have different uh, sensors on board, uh, they have different protocol uh, UMP variants um, and uh, before we had the Luft iBox um, there were two 
software um, uh, software systems uh, that support um, the sensors. First, the smart view software, the main software where you can read the sensor data uh, on a PC and put it uh, to a database and uh, graphical, make some graphical representation, visualization, and so on. But it's PC based. And then there is a UMB config tool. It's mainly done for installation, used for installation uh, and firmware upgrades. Um, it's also PC based. And um, customer told Luft, hey, please get rid of the PC solution because they wanted to um, have uh, a kind of sensor data management inside a cabinet uh, sitting on a DIN rail um, and uh, uh, not using PCs anymore because PCs are unstable for uh, uh, operation uh, for, for, uh, for server operations. If you have servers then you need a big uh, effort to make everything work. So the PC solution is not uh, what is required. They wanted to get rid, customers wanted to get rid of PCs uh, for sensor data integration. Then, if you know the smart view software, it's not quite easy to configure. You have to learn about this, you try a lot. Um, uh, the requirement was to make an easy configuration of sensor data handling. And, of course, customers need extreme flexibility because every installation has different requirements. Outdoor, on a building, um, on an airport, uh, in different scenarios, there are no, no scenario, I learned, no scenarios, no two scenarios have the same setup. Uh, so this is a very uh, critical um, requirement, it's flexibility. Um, of course, Luft does not have just one protocol talking with the sensors. Um, there are also other protocols, for example, think of the, the industry um, uh, products, they have uh, another protocol. So we need a little box to talk many protocols. And um, in short, the target was to build a little solution for easy integration of first class measurement data. Because if you have excellent measurement data, you need to put the data uh, in, a, in a target in a, in a good way. So because if the data is not used, it's worthless. Um, so this was our starting point. We saw uh, a growing number of sensors within Luft, not just within Luft, also from other vendors. Um, and um, they're talking different protocols, they, they, uh, um, they have different uh, measurement values, different types of sensors, different types of speed of uh, certain measurement values and so on. And on the other side, um, we have a growing number of data targets where to put the measurement data. This starts with the download in an Excel format or CSV, uh, goes on to kind of database integration where you want to put the measurement data into an Oracle, MySQL or so on, so a database. Some customers um, want to integrate the data into their own software. They need APIs, application programming interfaces, in, in, in different programming languages, of course. Um, some customers uh, need to have measurement data in, in their ERP systems, for example, SAP, for example, in lab view, lab, uh, lab view integration, and so on. And of course, we need to display the data on mobile devices. And not last but not least, um, pushing the data into cloud services uh, is a basic requirement of sensor data handling in, uh, in, in, in the last years uh, with growing importance. So this is our, our world as we see it, as we uh, saw it before we built the iBox. Um, on, unfortunately, there are many solutions on, on the market today, but 
solutions with just one-to-one -one connectivity. So one sensor is connected to one data target. And there is no generalization, there are no standards, there are no protocols uh, that handle all this kind of data uh, transmission, just different solutions. Um, unfortunately, there are no standards on the protocol level either. So we have today, we have Modbus, we have UMP, we have L2P, we have uh, HTTP and so on. Different uh, protocols, uh, sensors need to talk and the data targets uh, expect from sensors. And uh, the gap is that the protocols are not here uh, and data cannot flow. So this was a starting point building the Luft iBox and uh, the Luft iBox and the Luft iBox serial exactly uh, come into place now when it's uh, when the, when the job is to get data from any kind of sensor to any kind of business processes. And what the, the, the Luft iBox serial does in very short terms is store data, analyze data transform data into the correct units, formats, and so on, do a little bit sensor fusion, um, alert, alerting uh, against uh, ranges, and of course the mo most important part is integrate the data into data targets, as you see on the right side. Um, well, the box we provide today, we and Luft provide today, um, the Luft iBox uh, is um, a standard uh, embedded PC with a small housing that sits on a DIN rail, um, can be mounted on a DIN rail, so it's standard uh, mount. Um, we have a, a standard power supply, 24 to 48 volt. Um, we use just uh, about 2 watt. Um, it's low energy uh, and we provide out of the box the Ethernet and the serial interfaces. So I, I don't want to go into detail here, you see the, uh, the features uh, later. Um, let me talk about what's really new about the iBox. Well, there are two major points. First of all, we have a consistent web user interface. Every kind of um, administration can be done using the web interface. And the web interface, that means using your standard um, browsers on the desktop, on the mobile, on the tablet, anywhere, you can uh, administrate uh, the Luft iBox. And the even more bigger um, new feature on the, um, on the iBox is we are using apps and you know maybe apps from the, uh, from the Google Play Store or from Apple iPhone, I iOS, um, from the Apple App Store. Um, this is kind of a, a pattern we uh, use here in our Luft iBox 2. Um, there are a lot of apps available right now they all are available through the Luft iBox App Store and to use them just download it and download you, what, what you need, the apps you need. You don't have to download all the apps, you cannot download it because uh, the box uh, is not um, quite uh, good equipped that you can uh, install every app. But you can install the apps you need as on your smartphone um, and uh, configure, it, configure it and uh, here you, and you are done. So exactly for your application scenario, we have the right apps in the App Store. You have to find them, install them, and that's it. Um, so to understand how our apps are working, um, we have three kinds of, uh, of apps. We have in-apps, sys-apps and out-apps. Let me explain what is the difference between these three apps. The blue apps are 
in apps. In apps um, are in charge to get um, sensor data into the box. So we have a lot of apps for the um, Luft sensors, for example, WS, WS Serial. We have two apps because uh, one is uh, one connects via uh, Ethernet to the WS and the other one connects uh, via serial interface. So the same with IRS, um, Marvis, uh, Ventus and so on. Lots of, of sensors are already um, available um, from Luft and uh, just install the app and um, maybe configure with one or two uh, items uh, to specify. It's very easy to get the sensor data into the box. So, and when the data is into the box, then sys apps come into place. Sys apps, um, they make sensor data management enrich the functionality of the iBox. And um, I brought, I show you here three apps that can you give an image, uh, um, quite, quite of a, um, a little impression of what they do. We have uh, email alerting, an app that uh, sends email sends emails if there is an alert. So if you, you can make upper and lower boundaries and uh, an email is sent if the upper or lower boundaries are um, uh, broken. Uh, then we have a, a time sync app. The time sync app, for example, uh, syncs the time with the external um, uh, time servers. So the box um, can be stable, has a stable uh, time and date over a long time and time doesn't run away. Um, and another um, sys app for example, data logger, just install the data logger and your system is blown up uh, as a full data logger. So, but the, the most Im important point, the most um, important uh, apps are the, the alt apps. The alt apps um, put your data uh, to any kind of system to or, or deliver data upon request, push it, pull, let, let data pull, for example in, in CSV format, in JSON format, show it on a big screen, on, on, a, on a large screen, just the data display, or put it to a MySQL database. So we have lots of apps on this side already available. Um, and uh, you can put your data wherever you want it without apps. Um, this is another another slide uh, that says um, once you have your data from a sensor inside the box, you can install lots of um, of apps of out apps uh, working in parallel doing with the data what you want. For example, um, deliver the data upon request in JSON format. It's very important if you have a, a software, you write your own software and you want to get the data out of, uh, out of the iBox. Then another um, customer uh, said to us, hey, it's very important to get the data in Excel format, not in CSV, but in Excel, native Excel format. And we build an app and uh, now you can download all kind of logger data from uh, from um, start, beginning, any kind of uh, date ranges um, for analysis, downloading in Excel. Then we can show data on a large display. This is quite important, for example, for public displays or for, for viewing live data. Um, it's very easy to get data to um, the Luft iBox cloud. Luft iBox Cloud is a service where the cloud service where um, a Luft iBox can send all the data for uh, access uh, in the internet. So if you have, a, uh, for example, if you want to exchange da sensor data with another customer, or if you want to um, view it on a on a mobile, or or lots of other um, application scenarios, it's, it's quite handy to have a cloud on board and with just installing this app in, um, and uh, specifying a security key, uh, you can fully uh, use uh, the cloud um, 
the Luft-Ibox cloud. For example, if you have already mentioned it uh, or already seen it, um, we provide also SAP integration. There is an out app uh, that uh, delivers data upon request from SAP uh, module PM. PM is plant maintenance. Um, so, um, for example, for optimizing um, maintenance or service requests, um, we can deliver data directly into SAP or, of course, the database. Um, here on the bottom, you see lots of apps that are available too. I cannot go in detail here right now, uh, but to give you an, an, an idea, um, we, of course, send emails upon request. We have uh, Twitter, we can uh, send data to Twitter, to Facebook, we can make regular updates to Twitter, for example, uh, push, um, uh, make a Twitter tweet every hour or every 10 hours uh, to fill your, your, your timeline on Twitter. Uh, it's possible directly out of the box. You don't need any kind of, of cloud system, need nothing. You just need one Luft iBox and, and that's it. Um, we have also made recently a, a integration uh, of EFTTT, maybe you know that. That means if this, then that, and it's a kind of a rule engine uh, in the web uh, that can be triggered by the Luft iBox. So, for example, um, we have a temperature uh, of uh, falling below zero degrees. Um, then you can make a request to if this, then that. Uh, web service, and uh, if this and that, you can specify a rule. Hey, if degree falls below zero degrees, if the temperature falls below below zero degrees, then um, uh, make a heating on, or uh, make a lights on, or send me an email, or send an email to my friend, or whatever. Of course, we can. We have an integrated uh, an app for um, for relay control, so. We can control signal eyes, signal horns, and so on. So, and lots of uh, of apps more. Um, as Steve Steve Jobs uh, once um, answered a question um, when the new iPhone was on the market, uh, a customer asked, "Hey, can the iPhone do that, or can it do that?" And he just said, "Hey, there's an app for that." So, uh, go to the app store find uh, the right app for you and uh, you will be happy. And indeed, this is our target with the Luft iBox. As you see in the below, it's um, done like it's from Apple, but it's for sensor technology for you to make your business easier. Um, and please uh, go to the App Store, look at the App Store. Um, we quite release um, quite often release uh, new apps to the App Store or updates or something like that. You just download and activate the apps and, uh, and you're done. Um, or just go to the App Store and let you, be in, let, let you inspire what uh, to do with your data. Okay. So, uh, sorry for inconvenience uh, that we have to activate apps uh, every time it's downloaded, but um, since we uh, install apps not direct, not yet directly on the box, on the on the iBox. We have to go over a PC because we cannot um, assume uh, that every iBox is directly available on the internet, has direct internet access. Maybe this will change in 2015. At the end of 2015, that we will directly integrate app updates or app downloads to the box, to the, to the Luft iBox. But um, currently, you have to go. Uh, over your local PC. And so the activation is for simply for copy protection. Um, they have, they, we, we made it quite easy, but we have to do it. Some kind of copy protection um, to the activation. So let's go uh, in, a, in a few minutes to the App Store. Maybe you have already looked at luftivox.com. Um, we uh, have an App Store integrated, we have some news, we have uh, product features, specs, some uh, tips on, on how to FAQs, uh, on how to do that, how to do that. Uh, but most important is the App Store. Uh, I invite you to, to open the App Store and uh, if you look at the App Store, I made a preview here, um, you see some uh, 
some categories and uh, this category is now the in-app category and showing uh, the in-apps from, from the Luft portfolio. For example, um, we have here the WS serial app or the Marvis app and so on. So if we look at the WS uh, app, uh, one, one app is uh, shown as follows now. As a short description at the top, um, of course the price, this price is, uh, this app is uh, price free. Uh, we have the app key. The app key is uh, required for ac activation uh, as well as your serial number. So every iBox has a serial number and to activate an app you have uh, to specify the app key and your serial number and then you get an activation key and the activation key is required to install it on the box. Quite easy, if you've done it uh, once, you will never forget it. It's really easy. Um, there are some app details, app notes, and here is this is important. Um, please check your apps from time to time if there are ah, updates available. As you see here, the WS uh, is a very important device in the Luft uh, portfolio. Um, we have made uh, in April an update to connect three tensors uh, in parallel to the iBox or we made an update in, in July um, to improve the error handling. So new features or errors removed um, or um, better user interface handling, we will communicate uh, in the chapter change log. So stop by and um, see what has changed in your apps. Um, if you, again, to uh, install an app, uh, you have first find it, it's the most easy part, download it, it's also very easy, activate it with your serial key, um, then you get an activation key and you're done. It's very easy to download and install free apps. So if you've got uh, paid apps, it's a little bit more uh, difficult, but um, it's uh, not quite difficult. So first we have to find the right app, then download it, and then you have to get the app key, and the app key you go to the, uh, the shopping cart, um, you, then you uh, proceed to payment, uh, you pay for this app, uh, and then you get back instant uh, via email a, um, an app key and with this app key you build the activation key and, and you're done. So um, it's also very easy. Our um, process is quite straight as you know it um, from every e-commerce site um, and if you, uh, if you cannot pay via PayPal uh, no problem, Luft or Ondix uh, will be happy to make you a uh, proposal for the apps. Um, we can go the traditional way by paper or by email or whatever, it's no problem. Uh, so you don't have to go to PayPal. Uh, this is a the bigger the organization, uh, the more difficult it is uh, to pay via PayPal. We understand that and we provide the traditional way of uh, Make a pro making a proposal and, and, and getting the order. Okay. Um, let me talk um, some words about app pricing. This is an app, this is the list the list of apps available. I think two months ago. Um, a lots of in apps. Then we have uh, lots of out apps. Some sys apps. Um, and um, for every, it's important to understand, for every in-app, uh, the price is free. So you can, um, you can get the data out of every kind of Luft uh, sensor um, with an app that's free. Um, the apps that uh, are priced today is the big screen app. It's for displaying up to, I think, 24 values on a large screen. Um, the MySQL app is priced at 129 euro. Uh, will be out. Will be out is 150 euro. And very important is also the data logger. It's priced at 299. 
um, and the data logger uh, gives full data logging capability to all kind of channels measured in the Luft iVox. So uh, it does not matter if you get if you've got uh, from a BS serial two channels or um, IRS Ethernet two channels. It doesn't matter that data logger um, has a large memory and writes all kind of channel values into the data logger for further processing. So this is um, uh, what is the iVox today and um, what the apps are and uh, how we build the, the whole thing and why we build it and um, the customer has some benefits that are compelling. Um, first, the installation time. That means to get the data end to end. End to end means from the sensor down to the database or down to Excel is very, very short compared with the traditional uh, transmitters and configuration uh, hassles and so on. Then you can fully avoid programming. No line of code is required um, if you use the Luft iVox. It's no, no coding at all. So if you know that any kind of code you write in your organization um, uh, must be supported and uh, there has to be somebody in charge and this is um, quite difficult if things move. Um, of course, you don't need technical skill anymore. Just see the sensor, just plug in the cables and uh, you're done. And uh, with our app, um, system, you can go to the App Store and let you inspire about new ideas, uh, what others do with the sensor data, what you can do else with the sensor data, um, and try it out and um, realize new application scenarios. And of course the most important uh, is to save money because uh, you just need one device that does end-to-end -end integration. It's the Luft iVox or the Luft iVox serial uh, you don't need any kind of uh, uh, third-party um, uh, different devices to make the end-to-end -end integration. And many apps are for free, so um, uh, you can save a lot of money compared to traditional approaches. So this was um, why and how does it work. Uh, now let's come to some application scenarios in the environmental sector and I will show you five uh, application scenarios. Maybe they match your requirements, maybe not. Maybe they can inspire you what others are doing. Uh, um, and we'll start with an application scenario um, where just data, sensor data has to be display, displayed on a, on, a, on a PC uh, but with auto refreshing. So that means the PC can run standalone and refreshes and runs and runs and runs and uh, the data is uh, refreshed all the time. Nobody, there is no operator required. And um, there we have a, a WS501. Uh, then we have an ISOCON. Today we still need an ISOCON that will change in, in a few months. Um, then the data is read by the iBox and Using the uh, big screen or log graph live apps, um, we can show the data in a quite uh, nice day, nice way um, on on a PC, on a PC, on a tablet, on a, on, a, on a smartphone, as you like, in in a graphical visualization or in just text representation, uh, no uh, no matter. So this was our first scenario. The second scenario is to get um, data from a uh, WS sensor to an FTP server. Um, and then you need, there you need also an ISOCON to connect it to a Luft iVox. On the Luft iVox you need uh, the WS serial, of course, app, the data logger app and the new app uh, called Log FTP. And what the Log FTP app does is to actively make a connection to an FTP server and to push the data to an FTP server. This is very important that it is pushed because um, 
if the data would be pulled from an FTP server, then um, the GSM modem has to be configured with a static IP address. And this is dangerous, this is not secure, this is um, complicated to set up, uh, and it's expensive uh, because you need a static IP or a dynamic IP, whatever. Um, so you have to initiate, if you have to initiate, 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 sorry, initiate the con uh, connection from the FTP server. With uh, the iBox, we can initiate the connection from the iBox. So we just call out to the FTP server and we are done. Very easy to set up, very handy and uh, quite uh, cheap to set up. So next scenario is, this was a scenario I think in India or in Asia, um, this was an agro uh, meteor uh, measuring scenario. They have lots of stations. Um, they want to get a, um, a weather, um, weather data. They have a, a WS outside connected to an iBox and uh, the data is uh, regularly sent uh, as an email with a CSV attachment over a landline. So that means over a DSL high speed line um, and uh, processing and analysis is done uh, by, by a person. Um, persons are not uh, quite expensive at the site um, and they can do the analysis and visualization and so from all incoming emails. Yeah, this was a um, scenario I think in, in, in India or in Asia. Um, next one is just to display uh, on an iPad, the, the weather display on an iPad. We have again uh, uh, WS501 or take a 600 or a 201, it's no problem, um, connected uh, to the iBox. Then we have a, a Wi-Fi modem, a, an external Wi-Fi modem, so uh, not, not quite expensive. And then you can directly access all kinds of, of data um, in a graphical representation, uh, graphical vis visualization on, on the iPad. The iPad is installed, um, that it cannot be removed, it's on a public, uh, public display. Uh, and you need the apps. We need the apps WS Serial, the data logger uh, for uh, drawing also historic data, <coughs> and the app log graph. The next and last scenario I brought for you here is uh, a mixed uh, uh, a mixed uh, sensor scenario. We have an Opus, an industrial sensor, <coughs> connected via Ethernet to the Luft iBox. And we have two uh, WS uh, sensors connected via ISOCON RS485 to a Luft iBox. Um, and the Luft iBox uh, collects all the data with the in apps Opus 20 and uh, WS serial and then pushes data to a MySQL server. It's good, for example, for facility management or any kind of um, local installations. So this is what we are. Uh, we already worked uh, a little bit uh, on that. <clears throat> Maybe you know uh, Open Weather Map service. Open Weather Map is a, a public service uh, where data can be accessed. Weather data can be accessed um, via internet. Uh, we made an app uh, where you can download um, weather data from from a local from a, um, um, from a specific weather station, you can specify it and uh, in the app, and then it downloads the current weather conditions, uh, maybe also forecasts, um, down to the Luft iBox, uh, and uh, also gets local weather uh, from your uh, WS uh, sensor and puts it to the MySQL database for further processing, for example, forecasting or something like that. That was. Uh, some there were some environmental application scenarios, and now let's uh, very short come shortly come to a setup and installation scenario. Um, if you get uh, sorry, this is in German. Um, if you get um, a Luft iBox, then you have a, a quick start manual with six uh, very easy um, 
steps. Uh, the most uh, important is step three and the most difficult. It's uh, bringing the right IP address uh, to the box. Um, but this is the same procedure as with every uh, IP device in your network. Um, and um, it is uh, assisted by a, um, by a little assistant. Um, if you start the box for the first time, uh, you get uh, you, you enter uh, your username and your password, and then an assistant comes up uh, and asks you some uh, basic questions to, to make a basic configuration um, for the Luft I box, and then you are done. So with this assistant, you can start up in, in some five minutes, and you're, um, you have configured your I box. And then you can work with the iBox. Maybe you haven't seen uh, the iBox already. Uh, then we'll go to three uh, to uh, three slides of how it looks uh, an iBox. Um, first, we see the start screen. The start screen is uh, uh, requires your um, your username and your password. Uh, Give some uh, basic uh, contact details and as well as the serial number. The serial number is important if you have, uh, for example, forgotten your your credentials. Then you can call the support, the Luft support, um, to get another uh, login uh, for your serial number. Um, and then on the uh, in the photo you see also a manual. Um, and support contacts, uh, so you get everything you need uh, if you have uh, forgotten credentials or have any problems uh, before login. After login, if you have su successfully entered your credentials, um, you see the dashboard, and the dashboard uh, mainly uh, has uh, two uh, amples, two color schemes here, um, and they some, some kind of traffic lights. Uh, uh, they say this show the system status. Is it you know, is enough memory? You have warnings. You have errors, critical errors, and so on. And this goes from green to yellow, and yellow to red. And also the channel. Um, the channel lights are. Uh, it's no problem. It's green. And uh, if there are channels that cannot be read, it's it, it's going to get uh, yellow. And if uh, some channels can be read for multiple uh, times, then it, it's from, from yellow to red. Um, then we have an app control center in the menu here on the top. You see the apps and uh, what is below here is the app control center. You see all the apps you have installed and, and the devices uh, for each app. Uh, and if you have installed an app, um, you can make devices out of it. So you have to install one time the WS app. Uh, and then can you make, for example, two devices out of that? And two devices means, okay, we have two WS connected to the iBox and we read the data from two uh, weather sensors. Um, on this side you have, on this slide you have, uh, for example, one, two, three, four, five uh, apps and uh, four of them are deactivated. Um, and one is activated, it's the WS. And so this, in this scenario, all channels are read just from the WS scenario. We have no limit uh, of how many apps you can install, so you can try it. And it's just a channel limit because if uh, the channels, uh, they require time to be measured. Um, if you need more time, uh, then you want to have frequency of uh, the interval specified, then maybe you have problems, but uh, then you can adjust the channels or the frequency, um, and so you can avoid the problems. Um, this is a, a sample output of the app big screen. Uh, you see four, four groups of measurement values. Of course, you can name it as you want. It's not room temperatures here, but it's uh, maybe uh, different uh, sensors. Um, and uh, the red one is, um, has an alarm condition, and the alarm condition runs not just for the alarm condition, but you can specify that alarm condition should last five hours or two hours that you see, hey, there was a problem. And if you don't like the black in black, uh, white in black uh, display, then we also can provide um, 
custom apps, and this custom app is a, this output is a custom is from a custom app um, for a ski resort, and they have a, in between in the middle here uh, they have um, uh, a camera, a moving camera integrated, um, and the below is uh, the data for different sensors. From that's that's it. Um, before I come to the roadmap, that's what we want to do this year. We, I'd like to show you what we expect, we, that means Luft and Ondix, what we expect from you this year. Um, your roadmap, what is your roadmap? And <laughs> your roadmap is, uh, hey, you have to get one, you have to love it, you, you love it, you will love it, because it's so easy and so, uh, and so fast to understand. Then use it as a customer or sell it to your customer as a partner. Uh, of course, then um, help your partners, uh, use the support, get the, the iBox uh, running in a, in a very smooth way and without problems. So these are four steps on your roadmap. Get one, love it, sell and use it, help and get support. Um, and our roadmap finally is what we want to do. We want to present the Marvis integration. Marvis is the road, weather, the road uh, sensor with a cloud integration and smartphone alerting so that uh, the truck driver sees, hey, uh, the problem is uh, on this um, location. So we have a map integrated and you see what problem on, for example, on bridges. Uh, if bridges get frozen, um, the road gets frozen on bridges. Um, the smartphone uh, is, uh, shows the position and alerts the driver. Then we will provide cables, or Luft will provide cables uh, in a few months for direct connection of RS485 sensors so that, that you don't need any more the ISOCON modules. They are expensive and they are additional installation uh, efforts and so, so you, you get uh, rid of the um, uh, of the RS45, uh, of the isocons, sorry. Uh, we will see new apps for the new sensor SHM50. This is a snow height um, sensor, or the Silometer um, is also a new sensor within Luft. Uh, and uh, you see maybe in September, October, um, a an app for Anacon. Anacon is a universal analog input module for 4 to 20 milliamps, for 0 to 10 volt, for frequency input uh, with two channels. So you can integrate arbitrary sensors with standard interfaces into measurement scenario of Luft iBox. You will see a lot of new out apps, a lot of new in apps. I don't know if I go in detail here. You can get the slides afterwards. Um, maybe this is an important point here. We uh, recently started to integrate service information about sensors into in apps. That means, for example, if you've got a, a WS uh, app, you've got a WS sensor, you've got a WS app installed in the system, um, and uh, in the app, you will find manual data sheets, um, uh, calibration um, tips or recommendations from Luft and so on. But even better, it's not just information of Luft that can be found here, but you also, or the customer, can also upload information about wiring in the cabinet or pictures of, uh, of installation of the sensors because if they're on the roof, you cannot climb up the roof uh, to see what sensor is installed. You can make pictures, you can upload it, um, and even you can make a service countdown. For example, if, if a recalibration is due in six months, um, you can um, put 180 days, uh, and uh, it counts every day uh, down, and if, it's, uh, if the counter is zero, an email is sent or something other uh, things happen. Um, and to remind you, hey, the service is now due. Um, this is a Mavri scenario, I want to skip it. Uh, and we are working a little bit on, maybe I tell you this too, because 
uh, everybody talks about this. We are we're working a little bit on, on, on smart manufacturing, industry 4.0, and Internet of Things um, by providing Modbus apps, by integrating field boost controller. This may be interesting in energy harvesting scenarios, in green energy scenarios, uh, too. Um, then we provide standard interfaces for the 20 milliamps, PTC, PT100, you know all them. Uh, we also deliver the iBox already with certain machines, integrated, fixed integrated in machines. Of course, uh, there are uh, rising uh, number of um, uh, cloud integrations. So, this was our little show about um, Luft iBox, Luft iBox Serial in uh, environmental applications. I hope you have um, an understanding, a good understanding of uh, the features and the overview of the box, of how to use it in environmental applications, and um, you hope you are, I hope you have a feeling of that it's easy to set up uh, and uh, unlimited uh, in extension uh, expansion with apps. Thanks for watching. Um, Thank you, Wolfgang Klaus, uh, in the name of, of Luft. Um, as we can see, there are many questions already. I think we should uh, answer the questions mm -hmm. now. So now it's also allowed to, to ask more questions, but we will go into it now. No protocols for transmitting hours, road weather information system data to a central system. What about NTCIP being used in the US as a protocol, NTCIP for the Luft iBox? Okay, um, so I, I, uh, I see the questions not quite good here. Um, can I uh, enlarge uh, um, the display? Sorry. Uh, okay. So I try to answer by 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 hearing. Uh, NTC NTCP um, NTCP. I don't know this protocol. And maybe it's a um, no, P stands for protocol. It's NTCIP. That's a special protocol okay. for road weather information system. We have okay. already in our LCOM implemented, uh -huh. and we work with that. At the moment, it is not possible uh, with the Luft iBox, but uh -huh we can think about an, an app for that. Yes, of course. It's exactly the way we go. Um, if the, there is real demand and if uh, there is high pressure to make that, we can make an NTCP, uh, NTC IP app and then the, the iBox talks NTC IP. That would be no problem. We need a specification and uh, some, some budget and we do this. No problem. So then the next question is, uh, if you are allowing to perform control functions into the iBox, how are you addressing cyber security? Okay. Um, well, uh, we, the, the control side, um, the control world is dominated by PLCs. We don't want to break in the, this world, but um, today we offer um, not quite control, but we offer um, uh, the relay control maybe. Yeah? The relay control is not meant for, um, for controlling machines, something like that. It's just for signaling uh, lights or signaling horns. Um, and of course we have, uh, not just in control, but also in measuring, we have to guarantee security. And the security is um, addressed by um, uh, the, the credentials, so you need a username and a password. We have a standard protection of web interfaces um, in, built in, so it is not possible to get to a page without um, login. Um, so it is quite, it is quite um, ensured that the system is, is, is uh, locked um, and uh, maybe we'll in in the next um, months we will do a pen test for attacking uh, the Luft iBox uh, to get even higher security um, um, uh, quality assured. Okay, 
The next question, will this replace the Alcom? Maybe I can answer this question. Um, the Alcom, uh, the, the iBox will not replace the Alcom. As uh, said one minute before, um, the Alcom can, uh, for example, speak the, the protocol uh, NTCIP and uh, a few other protocols and you can configure a lot of things. Uh, so we will have both products uh, in our product range and we think that this uh, has to be in this way in future as well. Another question here, is it designed mainly to connect to one sensor or can it connect to a UMB bus with many devices? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Uh, we can um, uh, connect uh, a lot of sensors. We have existing installations with about 10 different sensors and about 60 channels um, read from all, uh, all the sensors together and um, it's no problem to have different sensors on different, even different protocols, different buses. If you have a, one sensor on the on the UMB, another on the uh, on the L2P, we have different protocols, different hardware, uh, hardware wiring. Um, it's no problem. We can contact a lot of sensors in parallel at the same box, at one box. Okay. Another question here, is there a version coming with a built-in cellular modem? Um, uh, well, we, with our Luft iBox, we concentrate on the core, um, on the core features and the core features uh, with respect to apps and data measurement and data handling. Um, we, uh, we use a modular approach uh, connecting to um, different sensors and different targets or um, yeah, okay this is um, quite of uh, uh, difficult to understand I make it more more precise uh, we concentrate on the box and the, the wireless um, the wireless uh, connection will be done via separate modules that is that, that can reside in the cabinet but not in the Luft iBox. The Luft iBox will, know, will not have any kind of um, uh, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth, GSM, something like that, but we will handle this via, uh, via a separate modem. Um, maybe in the future if if one scenario is dominating other scenarios, for example the GSM scenario, then we will think about that. But not in 2015, I suppose, uh, will be a, a built-in GSM uh, scenario because many customers don't need GSM and then you have to pay for GSM and uh, or we have to make 10 different uh, Luft I boxes and this is too, too, too hard to do for, uh, for now. So another question here. Is the iBox app also for the Android operating Android operating system and for Windows phones? Okay, um, uh, the app uh, the apps I I told you later on um, I told you before um, they haven't to do anything uh, on the code basis uh, on the code basis with Android iOS or Windows so. We have an app store. It's our our that means Luft and Ondix app store um, with the apps, and the apps can only run on a Luft iBox. They don't have anything to do with Android. Don't have anything to do with Windows. But you can of course um, use your Android phone to um, address uh, the, the the web user interface of uh, of the iBox and to remote control the iBox, of course. So, but you don't have to install anything uh, on your from the Google Play Store or from 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 the Windows App Store. Um, we will provide in the next months a Android app, uh, sorry, a an iOS app for Marvis, um, where you can see where the um, um, the geolocations are, where where, where an alarm has rise rise. Uh, but this is just for Marvis. And not has nothing to do with the apps I uh, told you later uh, before. Sorry. So here is there a monthly fee on top of the app price. Uh -huh. 
Um, uh, the, the apps are priced one time um, when you download it. Um, and this, we, we have just one app that is not priced uh, at the beginning for one time, that is, has recurring fees, it's the SAP app. Uh, every other app is, re is, is just paid once uh, while downloading or is free, of course. Um, uh, when it comes to the cloud, uh, the cloud ha has a monthly fee. If you, have, if you want to have a cloud for your uh, Luft iVox, uh, there is a, a monthly fee, uh, but it's independent of the apps. Okay. Then we have another question, uh, if there is a Bluetooth uh, support possible. I think you, you said that before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, Bluetooth we can support, uh, but we have to know exactly what kind of uh, Bluetooth protocol. And so it might, maybe Bluetooth, Bluetooth is used to get rid of RS-232 cables. Then we can transparently use Bluetooth out of the box right now. Yeah. It depends on... on how you want to use Bluetooth. Here, can I uh, manage the iBox remotely? Um, yes, iBox is um, remotely manageable um, because we just use uh, a web interface on port 80 and uh, it's no problem to, if, you, if uh, the router is configured, the GSM modem is configured, uh, then you can completely manage it remotely with your, just your web browser. Another interesting uh, question here, can I write my own apps? Okay, um, yes you will, but not right now. <laughs> you will have, uh, we will open the development process, um, I think in, in, in the year 2016, next year, um, because if you start writing apps, uh, we have to make a, a review process uh, that your app comes to the App Store and uh, your app is um, uh, used maybe by others, you can sell your app to the App Store and uh, this possibility will be, uh, will come in, in 2016. But uh, sorry, we, we will provide a, a good SDK and uh, testability uh, and give us some time to do that. Thanks. <laughs> so another, another question to you, to your answer, uh, what language will it be for, to, to develop uh, their own apps? Okay. Um, today, the, um, the the iBox supports two languages, German and English. Um, if we open the app development process to third parties, as you are, um, then the development language will be English, of course. But we would appreciate it to have um, apps to, with two languages, German and English. Uh, maybe we can help you to translate it uh, to German too. But our first programming, uh, our first language is always English. Um, here another question. Do you have diagram showing how to use WS Ethernet app? Uh, diagram, that means uh, wiring diagrams, I suppose. Um, Maybe Luft can provide this uh, because there are, uh, or we can do this together with, uh, with Luft uh, to, pri to provide uh, the right um, uh, wiring uh, diagram. If this is a problem, um, we can, of course, we can assist you. It's no problem. Yes, I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. um, what is the data output speed from iBox connected to Marvis? Okay. Um, the data output speed, that means how fast can data connect it from Marvis, I think. Um, well, uh, Marvis delivers, I think, several hundred samples per second um, in a, that road monitoring can uh, do online uh, while driving. Um, we will provide about uh, one or ten seconds and above. Uh, samples of 10 seconds and above, and this will not uh, be enough to um, uh, to get the data out of mobile Marvis uh, while Marvis is driving. The, our we, we more fo we focus more on the stationary uh, scenario while using Marvis. 
Yes, okay. And the last question so far, can we upload firmware remotely via the iBox? Um, if you mean firmware for sensors, yeah. not yet. No. This is not, not yet possible. Um, that To make firmware updates, uh, you, you still, unfortunately, you still need um, the UMB, uh, UMB config tool. Um, maybe we'll, we can integrate this at a later point. Uh, if this is uh, really important, um, then apps will provide also this function uh, to, to make a firmware update. Okay, that was the last questions. Oh, there's another one. Will there be an SDI 12 output app? <laughs> okay, thanks for the question. Um, as I understand, SDI 12 is, an, uh, is a serial, uh, serial 1200 board um, uh, protocol that is quite easy. I heard of it. I, I cannot, uh, I haven't looked in it. Um, we can, we could provide this, uh, I think, quite fast, but we need a spec and uh, we need uh, some um, uh, some possibilities to refund it or somebody who says yes, I need it and I will fund it for you because I think it's in, it's very important for for transport uh, or or road um, management in the states uh, and elsewhere. Uh, so maybe we can think about SDI 12 apps indeed. Yes. Okay, I think that was the, the last question for today's webinar. Thank you, uh, Wolfgang Klaus, for that deep insights uh, into the Luft iBox for environmental applications. And thank you all for the attendance. Um, and stay tuned uh, about new webinars and new apps for the iBox on our websites. Uh, and have a great day and see you next time. Bye-bye.